all of the reasons why George Santos should not resign tonight on the Tom Kelly Show. The Tom Kelly Show. Everybody, I want you to go to the Tom Kelly Show. I want you all to know from the Tom Kelly Show. Thank you. Trigger warning, spoiler alert. George, please stay. You are experiencing the Tom Kelly Show. You are listening to the podcast that broke the news of John F. Kennedy. You are listening to the podcast that was there for the moon landing. Uh, you are listening to the podcast where Franklin Delano Roosevelt did his fireside chats during the Great Depression. And new podcasts every Monday and Wednesday. And my name is Tom Kelly. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian who is owning the midlife crisis. I, I give my opinion on things. And one of these things uh, is this George Santos thing and why I think George Santos needs to stay in office despite being exposed as a great liar. Uh, my name is Tom Kelly. I, I worked for Goldman Sachs in the 19... Did I just call it Goldman Sachs? Okay, like, oh, geez. I can't even get the punchlines right. Goldman Sachs. Sachs sounds dirtier than socks, by the way. Uh, but let's try that whole bit again. Uh, my name is Tom Kelly. I'm a stand-up comedian who is owning the midlife crisis. I give opinions on things. What qualifies me to do this podcast? I worked for Goldman Sachs and Goldman Sachs in the 1990s. My grandparents were gay Holocaust survivors who drove Hitler to kill himself, thus ending World War II. Uh, I personally shot Osama bin Laden as a proud member of SEAL Team 6. And what does everything I have said so far have in common? Um, none of these lies are as good as the ones told by George Santos. Uh, I don't think he's my, he's not my congressman. He's from the North Shore of Long Island, but he's from my state. Uh, he is the congressman from uh, North Shore, Long Island, and some rich neighborhoods in Queens. And God bless the man. He won. He won. Uh, and, and I have issues with a lot of things. The day after he won, the New York Times started to investigate who this guy was. Now, just as I'm doing research on this podcast and making it sound and making myself sound intelligent. Uh, I just read an article published in the New Yorker January 20th. So yesterday, the day, yeah, you know, a day or two before this podcast was released. Apparently a local paper sounded the alarm on George Santos. Nobody listened. Claire Malone. Okay. The editor. Okay. Actually, well, you know, let's just see if I can play the clip here. Wait, wait, hang on. Is this a long, no, it's a 22 minute podcast. I'm not rebroadcasting a whole other podcast, but apparently the North Shore leader published an article saying he was a bit of an idiot. None of the bigger papers picked up on it. Nobody picked up on it until after the man was elected. If you only get one sentence out of my opinions on today's podcast, the press started paying attention to George Santos after he won, which is honestly, it's too late, people. My thesis for today's podcast is that George Santos needs to stay in office because the press and electorate failed America. So not only did the press fail America, but we, the voting public, we failed ourselves. You can't trade in your car when Consumer Reports comes out with the new car guide after your purchase. You can't. You can't say, oh, hey, uh, turns out those Teslas like to drive off bridges. Uh, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't, you can't do the refund if you make the purchase before the bad press, you know, and the list is good. I, I've actually been doing a little bit of research to try to sound intelligent about George Santos so far. Uh, lies he has told so far. His name, uh, he hasn't always gone by the name George Santos. He's gone by Anthony Santos. George DeVolder, that's just a poor name. Uh, Anthony Zabrowski. George Anthony Santos DeValder, and among others, DeValder was his mother's surname. He lied about being Jewish, and on uh, Fox News, the one network willing to cut a guy like him a break to Gabby Tulsard, 
He's like, I'm Jewish. My grandparents were Jewish, but I'm not practicing. I'm Jewish. That's an old Seinfeld joke. If that, uh, you know, I mean, I've heard the joke before. You're doing hackery on Fox News. You know, I, I mean, oh my God, I'm Jewish. That he's a descendant of Holocaust survivors. He's lying about his mother being in the towers on 9 11. Uh, lying about his mom's resume. Now his mom's dead. I mean, we could maybe, I mean, you know, I, I mean, how he paid for his campaign. Now, I think there's a few campaign numbers that might get him in trouble, that a lot of his uh, uh, campaign expenditures were literally three cents under whatever he had to do to report it. So it was a lot of, if it's $400, it was a lot of three ninety nine ninety sevens. Uh, what else did he lie about? Oh, that he worked in finance. He lied about working at Goldman Sachs. God damn it, Goldman. Uh, that four of his employees died in a Pulse nightclub uh, shooting. Uh, that he went to Horace Mann. Actually, and here's what's funny about Horace Mann: the guy there is apparently a Tom Kelly who worked there, who is a sex offender. So don't Google Horace Mann that hard. But yeah, but apparently. Uh, he lied about whether or not he may have graduated from uh, college. He lied about whether or not he played volleyball in college. I mean, honest to God, people, George Santos's election resume reads like my Tinder profile. Actually, even worse, my Tinder profile is more honest. I just added an inch embellished and I may be lying about how good my credit is now. Good God, man. I mean, uh, what else? Uh, oh, my favorite one that he worked for uh, Goldman Sachs and Citigroup, that he ran an animal charity. And my favorite one this week, the one that made me, uh, the one that, this is the why that made me want to podcast about the man for a minute, that he swindled a homeless veteran and the veteran's sick dog. You know, and again, all of this stuff, people, uh, you know, you talk about not paying attention again, the, and I will listen to, this is in the New Yorker. I'll put the link in the show notes, but the North shore leader, a small little, that little paper that's probably sitting at the bottom of not even your Seven Eleven, but at your local delicatessen, your mom and pop food store in your town. You know, when you talk about journalism being dead and people not paying attention anymore, cause we're all busy looking at national news, uh, what did Donald Trump do to us today? What did Donald Trump say on his website? You know, we're so obsessed with the big national news that we're ignoring the stuff happening in our own neighborhoods, you know? Uh, and I've been involved, we'll go in, you know, I've been involved in a few political cases lately. Um, hang on, now I've been involved in four or five political campaigns. I actually wrote out a lot of these notes ahead of time. Maybe I'll publish this as a blog too. Uh, I've been involved in four or five political campaigns. I think the real number is four. I have endorsed two Democrats and two Republicans that I have grown up with or have known in my day. Uh, Cindy Barkley, Cindy Sorensen Barkley, she ran for city council as a Democrat up in Troy, New York. And uh, there were issues of possible election fraud there. We'll talk about that another time. Uh, my old college roommate, Jorge L. Cabrera, who only calls me every two years when he needs a donation for his campaign, and that is noted, George. Um, George, God bless, also doesn't like any of my Instagram posts. Say what you want about Cindy, likes all my posts. Uh, George had an instance where he ran for office, won on election night, and then the next day there were 300 votes found for the other guy in a box and he let it go and won two years later, fine. That got a little bit of press, blah, 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 again, because he was running for state senate in Connecticut. Uh, a big one that you, the Tom Kelly Show listener, may know if you've been following me for the last two years I've been doing the podcast is Tom Kniff. Tom Kniff ran for Attorney General of New York City, uh, his resume. He's an Army veteran. Uh, he worked at the Biltmore Beach Club for my father, uh, he he ran against, and you will know him from national headlines. He ran against a guy, Alvin Bragg, who is the current Manhattan district attorney. Um, Kniff won 11% of the vote and this guy Bragg won the rest. Uh, 
And, and when you talk about how low and how bad Kinef did as a Republican running in the most Democratic borough of New York City, I think Mickey Mouse got like 3%. Um, but here's the thing. Kniff could not get any press as a Republican. He couldn't. He, we interviewed him on this podcast, and I think we were the third biggest interview he had. And that is said with self-loathing. And I mean, when you consider that my audience is national, it wasn't like it was, uh, you know, but it was a great interview, a great conversation, because he said, uh, he basically said on this podcast that Alvin Bragg, uh, the very, 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 very liberal district attorney, he said Alvin Bragg would do all the things that everybody hates him for doing now, which is Alvin Bragg ran on a platform of, I don't feel like prosecuting crime. He was like Johnny Wokeness. And, you know, my politics are kind of in the middle. And, I, and I'll tell you, if you listen to Kniff's interview, I think a lot of you guys would have liked him. You know, he was cognizant of things. You know, he was cognizant of uh, racial disparity. He gave a great interview on this podcast. I mean, I, I didn't know him well before. He grew up in my neighborhood, but uh, uh, I honestly don't know him well. Uh, but he gave a great interview here. And we were, this podcast with a, you know, a loyal national following was the best uh, thing he got. And here's my thing is what happened with his Alvin Bragg was Alvin Bragg about a year ago, he made a lot of national headlines, crime rate in New York city is going up in part because of poorly written bail reform laws. And uh, this guy Bragg's decision to not prosecute people. At least that was the appearance. We could argue about it later. I don't want to get into the politics, but all you need to know is the history is. Then uh, Kathy Hochul, who is now the, uh, the governor of New York, uh, then she was the governor, but like governor by replacement. She is now the elected governor of New York, but at the time she's like, I'm the new governor, and I'm going to use my right to push you out of office. No, this guy won by an astounding lead, and he's doing exactly what the people of Manhattan wanted him to do. Now, could that destroy Manhattan? Yes, that is the power of democracy, and that is the danger of democracy. Uh, if democracy is full of idiots, idiots, you know, if you and a dumb guy, the dumb guy's vote counts as much as yours. And here's the thing with Alvin Bragg, is our friend Tom Kniff was screaming all of this stuff was going to happen. And the only press Kniff got was this podcast and I think uh, Sid and Bernie in the morning, an AM radio show. And the story gets, uh, and I'll give you another one that's ha I'm, a story I'm much more passionate about. Uh, it's less glamorous. Um, I've hinted on the podcast that I've been involved in a political campaign. A f I started getting involved in a friend of mine's election campaign the night after he got he won the election, I guess would be the right way to say it. He's, uh, or the night we thought he won the election. Uh, my buddy Tom Sullivan, who's a guy I want to have on this podcast. Uh, I grew up next door to his family in Brooklyn. I've talked about the Sullivans on the podcast before. They're very influential on my youth. Uh, Sullivan is a 9-11 survivor who is an, active, or is an Army reservist of 28 years. Uh, he has won, I believe, the Silver Star, where he was decorated uh, it's the highest honor you can get for civilian off-duty action. And he was decorated for convincing everybody on his floor on the 95th floor of the World Trade Center on September 11th to evacuate. And everybody, but I think four people on his floor, everybody but four individuals, got under the second plane. Sullivan's an Army reservist. After being covered in soot, running away from the collapsing towers on 9-11. He was shoveling on the 12th. He doesn't really talk about that, by the way, when he campaigns. That might be another sign about humility when you go back, going back to Santos is, I find the people with the most to brag about, don't brag. Sullivan, three combat tours and a fourth tour deployed as a reservist uh, or elevated uh, active duty. I believe in the man so much, he handles my retirement money. And long story short, on election night, he won by 250 votes. Second round of voting, or the second round of counting, he won by eight. Uh, third round of counting, down by one with a bunch of votes, a bunch of ballots uncounted. And his opponent, who is a second generation politician, her mother had the job. She kept suing to get ballots readmitted 
that were disqualified by a bipartisan voting commission. And long story short, the place she was suing was a court managed by her mom. Her mom was the county clerk and her mom was signing all these court decisions against my buddy. And my buddy got very little press. And the press, I know the press was directly contacted. You know how I know? I was writing reporters myself on his behalf. That became my part-time job after the uh, royal wedding thing or after the Earthshot Prize was me. I was just basically going to places, emailing like, why aren't you following this Sullivan story? Why aren't you following this Sullivan story? And I got one or two replies. I know a couple of the emails and direct messages got read, but that's it. Now, George Santos, George, now, now George Santos, he kills a veteran's puppy. You pay attention. Now, this Tom Sullivan thing, and, and in the end, the big ending is, after a lot of lawsuits, my buddy lost by 15 ballots. It was, and I don't want to get too into the story, but it's a story that the press should have been covering. What if a tie like this happens and it's for president in New York State? Or what happens if a tie like this happens in, uh, for governor or whatever? And, and this is the thing with New York State and what happened in my buddy's election. Georgia held two elections for senator in the time it took New York State to count my buddy's votes slash ballots for his assembly seat. I mean, uh, and again, no coverage. You know, where was Newsday? Where was the New York Post? And same thing on Santos. You're telling me the North Shore Examiner, let me get the name in his paper because we all should be buying a damn subscription to it, that we, we all should be subscribing to the North Shore Leader. You know, that's like the penny saver was the big one on Long Island. That's like the no-name press. Massive Equal Post was uh, my town's equivalent. You know, now we have the Massive Equal Moms Group. There's no journalism in our moms groups. We don't, and you're right. I mean, listen, when was the last time I bought a copy of the Massive Equal Post? 15 years ago? 20? I don't think I've bought the Massive Equal Post since I wrote for it in high school. But this woman in the North Shore, or this writer for the North Shore leader exposed it. None of the bigger papers paid attention until after Santos won. And that's the thing with journalism, man. Journalism is a part of, I, I mean, I graduated with a journalism-ish degree, mass communications, and I took a lot of journalism classes, and there was a nobility to journalism. Journalists were a part of the democratic process. Now journalists, for local papers, they're making $25 an article if you're lucky. Um, a journalist, quite frankly, now it's about the clickbait. You know, I, I gave a writer a tip on my Tom Sullivan story, nothing. Gave her a tip on a uh, Hooters waitress I knew who got fired uh, on Long Island. She followed up. You know, we, it's the things we click on, people, and, and there you go. I mean, so I had a big ending to this. Uh, oh, yeah, back to the big, uh, let me bring my, uh, let me get back into performing mode here. Here's my problem. The press doesn't do it. It's the press's job. Yeah, I covered that point, but... You have to do your research before you buy. And to teach us a lesson, I say, George Santos, you're an awful human being. You are a liar. You've lied about 9-11. You've lied about the Holocaust. You've lied about veterans' puppies. You've lied about how you get your money. You've lied about how you spend your money. You've lied about your credentials and whether or not you even went to college. And you know what I say to you, George Santos? Stick with it, pal. You're the congressman we deserve. Maybe in two years, the press and the voting public will start paying more attention. I had other things I wanted to talk about today. If you made it this far, shoot me an email. I'm kind of curious. I don't think I'm going to do a big edit on this podcast. If you, if you got this far, let me know if you got here. Uh, Tom Kelly Show at me.com. Um, if you're feeling crazy, for those of you who have been paying attention, uh, I... Ooh, I don't want, should I? The liquor license for the restaurant that's under my bedroom window is up for renewal. If you want to write a protest letter, shoot me a note and I'll give you the email to write the liquor authority and say, close the backyard restaurant under Tom Kelly's bedroom window. It's not going to work, but it'd be fun to have a couple of you guys in on this. And uh, yeah, I have a great uh, uh, podcast coming up on Wednesday with Kim Callis, who went to my high school. Actually, let me get her name right. Quick, 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 quick. The, yeah, Kalish. 
Kim Kalish, I went to her one woman show and she's been on the moth. Uh, she went to my high school and uh, yeah, hopefully she'll have some interesting things to say. And you know what, man? First time I've had a 20 minute solo podcast in a while. So you know what, folks? Share the podcast in any political groups that might be interested in this. Share this podcast with a friend and uh, just remember, folks, you deserve George Santos. Good night, New York.